Good morning, fellow programmers. Thank you for joining me. I'm T Pain, and welcome to another Let's Learn. Feel free to use the skip ahead feature on the right hand side to jump ahead to any specific sections or examples. Today we'll be using Python 2.7.4. Um, you can download it from python.org slash get it. Today we'll be focusing on classes. This will build heavily on past lessons, so feel free to go back and watch them again if anything is unclear. Alright, so classes, what are they? So classes are a way of packaging variables and functions together. For instance, say we wanted to create a character in a video game. Um, this character would have attributes and actions that he can do. For instance, he'd have health, he'd have a weapon to start out with, um, etc. And these would be his attributes or uh, variables that we store specific stuff in. Um, and the things that he can do are specific functions, like he can attack, he can run, he can explode, who cares? <laughs> so how do we use them? Well, let's go ahead and create on our desktop a class file. And I'm just going to do that doing uh, by creating a text document. And we're going to call this um, classes underscore example dot py. Okay. It's asking me if I want to change the file extension. Click yes. All right. And then I'm going to go ahead and right click and edit with idle. All right, so I have idle open. Um, I have the Python file um, down below and then the shell up above. All right, so let's go ahead and begin with uh, typing a very short class example. The way you start out declaring a class is using the keyword class. It's all lowercase, so C-A-L-L, I can't spell. <laughs> C-L-A-S-S, -S, space, and then typically with classes, you'll always, always, want to start out the first letter uppercase, the rest of it lowercase. Unless there's multiple words, then you make those uppercase, um, start out uppercase as well. So we're going to type test, capital T, lowercase e, s, t, colon, enter, and just type pass, P-A-S-S. -S. As you uh, may remember from before, that's just a placeholder, doesn't do anything, just says, hey, just skip past this Python. All right, and after that, we're going to type x equals space, and then test open close parentheses just like we would for calling a function and then press enter and we're done save it and then press uh, f5 on the keyboard or you can go up to the run on the menu bar and then run module right there all right and it worked all right so there was no errors returned and it just created that class then the program ended cool that's exactly what we wanted excellent work all right so within classes you'll notice that you'll be using this keyword self and it'll be referring to anything that is its own function or its own variables. So if you're ever having any issues um, with creating classes, double check that you're using the keyword self within the arguments of the functions. Self is a way of saying, hey, this function is attached to me or this is my function. The same goes for variables, which we're going to be creating in just a bit. So for now, we're going to go ahead and clear out this file and we're going to start a new class. This one's going to be class Upper, uppercase P, lowercase h, colon, enter, and then we're going to begin declaring our function. So we start with def, space, lowercase print, uppercase ham, and then begin the arguments. And here, we're, the very first argument we're going to put in is self. We're not going to put in any other arguments, but if you were to, um, you would use a comma and then put in wherever you wanted right there. Okay, so we're going to go ahead in the parentheses, colon, enter, print, and then in quotations, ham, enter and we're done creating our class so now we're going to go ahead and create an instance of the class and we're going to do that with x equals uppercase p lowercase h open close parentheses enter and then we're just going to call that function using the dot accessor so x dot print ham open close parentheses enter save and then we're going to run it pressing f5 perfect so we didn't have any errors returned and it actually printed out ham our function worked exactly as we had so our class example worked great but what happens if we don't include self well let's go ahead and try that out we're going to delete self save press f5 again to run and we're going to get a type error and notice what the uh, error says print ham takes no arguments but one was given that one that was given was actually the self um, that wasn't here. So we can really quickly fix that by typing self back in. So if you ever run into this error, you'll know that you're missing self in there probably. All right, so next we're gonna declare a constructor or a uh, initialization function for this class. 
All right, so what is a constructor? A constructor is a function that is called when the class is created. It is in charge of all the setup work for a class. For example, if we wanted our character to have some default health and weapons when he started the game, this is where we would put them. All right, so we're gonna change our current class to include a new constructor. We're gonna go up to the very top and press enter to add in another definition. So def underscore underscore init underscore underscore open parentheses self close parentheses colon enter and next we're going to type in self dot y is equal to five save and then at the very end of the file we're going to go ahead and try to access that variable y so what is this function that we just created this is the constructor double underscore init double underscore is the name of the function that Python uses to construct stuff when it's initially created. You're always going to want to include self in the arguments and then any variables or any functions that you wish to access um, within itself, you're going to use self dot whatever the variable name or the function name is. And this is saying, hey, this is my variable. Um, if I were to create another uh, variable like Z, for example, I'll show you what will happen. At the very bottom of the file, go ahead and type print space x dot y, and this will print out uh, the uh, y parameter that we plugged in. Then after that, type print x dot z, save, and go ahead and run this. We should expect to find an error. All right, let's look at what happened. Um, up above, we had ham print out because we ran that function print ham, worked great. Um, then we printed five, which was the variable that was attached um, to the class object. And then, and then we tried to access variable z. However, we did not include self dot in front of the z. So this variable was created locally within the function and then was deleted after it executed. So this variable z was not stored within the class. And so it returned this attribute error saying that there was no instance of z within it. Perfect. So that's exactly what we'd expect to happen. All right, so what if we wanted to access functions within other functions? Well, it's very simple. Just the same way that we can access variables within a class, we can access functions. So right here, I'm gonna actually call this print ham function right here within it in the init. So we should see it as soon as it's constructed, it will call this function. So I'm gonna type in self dot print ham open close parentheses, we do not need to include self within this, within the arguments. It's only within the definition of the function itself. And now I'm going to delete those final two lines so that we're only creating the class instance. We're not actually calling the function outside of itself. All right, so go ahead and click save and then press F5 on the keyboard to run it. Perfect. So you saw ham printed out because this function was called within the initialization or the constructor of the PH class. Perfect, great job. All right, so next we're gonna actually create our own hero class. And we're gonna go ahead and clear out this file that we currently have. All right, so let's begin by typing class, capital H for the hero, colon, enter, def, underscore, init, underscore, self, and then we're gonna plug in another argument called name within the uh, parameters, and then end it with a colon, enter, and now what we're doing is we're saying, hey, we're going to pass in a name. Now we need to store it within the character. So we're going to do that by typing self.name is equal to name. Enter. And so any name that we pass into the arguments will be stored right attached to the class. Perfect. After that, we're going to type in self.health is equal to 100. Enter. And we're going to create another function within this class. So we're going to go an unindent and type def eat open parentheses and we're going to type self because that has to be at the beginning of every function that within this class and we're going to type in food close parentheses colon enter and then we're going to include a simple if else if statement to check for what food is being passed in to the arguments so we're going to type in if open parentheses food is equal to uh, and that's double equal to check for something and we're going to check if it's equal to apple in quotes in parentheses colon enter self dot health is minus equal to 100 why why are we taking away health this guy's allergic to apples unfortunately so he's gonna die as soon as he eats an apple 
Um, all right, so we're going to unindent and then type elif, open parentheses, food is equal to ham, close parentheses, colon, enter self dot health is plus equals to 20. Perfect. And we're done creating this class. We're going to unindent all the way back down. And now we're going to wrap up the file by creating this an actual class instance of this. So Bob is equal to hero and then open parentheses. And then we're going to punch in his name, which is Bob, of course, Clo uh, in the quotations, in the parentheses, enter. So we're going to go ahead and double check everything now by typing print Bob dot name, print Bob dot health, and then Bob dot eat. And then we're going to feed him an apple. To, to see what happens. And that apple is just a string. Enter. And then finally, we're going to print Bob's health again. Bob.health. And now we're done. All right. So to review, we've declared a class definition. We've declared an instance right here with Bob is equal to the hero. We've printed the name. We've printed the health. He eats an apple. And then we print his health again. All right. Let's go ahead and save. F5 to run it. Oh. <laughs> So I ran into an error because I misspelled health up top. So I'm going to go ahead and fix that real quick. Health, save, and press F5 to run again. Perfect. All right. So what's returned to us? Bob, the name is returned first. Excellent. That's what we'd expect. And then Bob's health is returned at 100. He eats the apple, which he's allergic to, and then he has zero health. Perfect. Let's go ahead and punch in ham in here to make sure that our ham is working. Ham, save, F5 to run. Perfect. We get 120 health. Excellent. All right, so we're going to wrap up this example by adding some documentation for the hero. Now, in other examples, we've had uh, documentation be added to within the function right here by using triple quotations and then ending it. And we can punch in like whatever we want right here, right? You can also do that the same way for classes. So we're going to go triple quote, enter, enter, triple quote, and then punch in whatever we want within here. So we're going to go ahead and punch in a quick string um, saying a hero who is allergic to apples. So this documentation is key because for any coders or anybody else creating instances of this down the road, they have this clarify what this class actually does. All right. So this is the end of the Python basic series. Congratulations on making it so far. Excellent work. You now know the basics and fundamental stuff that makes Python Python. I will be starting up an intermediate series soon, so keep an eye out for that. Please subscribe so you don't miss it when it comes out. We'll be covering intermediate topics like object-oriented programming, inheritance, UML, Python QT, Python with Maya, and reading and writing files. Thank you so much for watching. Great job keeping up. Definitely take a few minutes to investigate this final example. Um, please leave me a comment below if this helped you at all, and please do me a huge favor and subscribe to my channel. Thank you for all your support and keep the dream alive.